welcome back to lowcarbrecipeideas.com. Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, I've been playing around with chocolate chip recipes and I found one that I think works quite well and I wanted to share with you. So we're going to make low carb chocolate chips. That way you can make your chocolate chip cookies, you can make um, brownies with chunks of chocolate chips in them. Great idea. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, we're going to be working on the stove to get everything melted and put together. So I did a lot of shopping around and I thought I'm never going to find this cocoa butter, which is the product that I'm going to use today. Now, um, in just a town I went to 30 minutes from here, London, Ontario, they had um, healthy planet is what the store was called and they just happened to have it. I was looking online, I couldn't find it anywhere so I picked it up there and I was very happy. So what I needed was I need around 30 ounces of the cocoa butter and I weighed it on my scale because I really didn't know what 30 ounces was and I'm in grams and milligrams so it's around 86 grams. So you can see they're chunks and they smell they smell like chocolate, they smell like cocoa so I'm going to put my three ounces in there and hopefully you can find it without having to order online because they always hit you for for, um, for shipping and I just lucked out and I found it in this health food store so I was very happy with that. I have my pan on low heat right now and now I have, oh I forgot my cover here, I got a 100% chocolate bar if you can see it there and I weighed it also, I needed around 2 ounces, so that was 56.70 uh, grams, so I did 57 grams of, of that. And I am going, I broke them up into pieces here, and I'm just going to throw them in here, and I'm going to melt these two products together. Okay, I've got them all nice and melted, so now I'm going to add in a half a cup of powdered erythritol. Now, um... I always powder it because I'm using the, the stove and heating it. You don't have to powder it, but as soon as I buy it, I buy it in bulk and I automatically put it in my Ninja machine and I powder it so I have it all ready for whatever I am making. So we're going to stir this up. Okay. So I've got that all nice and smooth. We want to make sure we don't have any kind of lumps in here. So now we're going to add in two-thirds cup of cocoa powder. And I picked this up at Costco. It's a really good quality um, Rodell Organics. It's a, a really good quality cocoa. So now we're going to add this into the mixture here. And I think the secret of this recipe is your um, cocoa butter to try and keep them more solid instead of just totally melting apart. So I'm going to keep stirring this. Okay, I think I've got all the lumps out of it. I'm shutting off the burner. And then we're going to take it over to the counter and add in some vanilla. So I have half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'll stir that in. The next thing, I'm going to just set that aside for a minute. And I have my cookie tray. And on my cookie tray, you can buy um, chocolate chip molds. Um, but I just had a brain wave, brain fart, whatever you want to call it. And I used to cook bacon on this. This is a silicone mat, so you can see on the one side it's all pointy. And then on this side it's, um, it's got little holes. So I thought, okay, let's use that and make the chocolate chip molds instead of spending a fortune on the real thing. So I'm going to take my chocolate. And I'm just going to start spreading it. So I want you to see, it takes a little bit of work to get this. It's taken me a couple of minutes. I've been working on it off the video. 
I'm not recording it, but I want you to see I ended up taking the cookie sheet off for now because I couldn't get to the edges. So I'm just working it. It's worth it. Okay, I got it done, and you know what? It took around 10 minutes to do it. There's still little pieces of chocolate on my floor and on the counter. So I'm just going to take this, and now I'm going to put it in the fridge and let it all get hard. So I had them in the fridge for quite a while, and I just have a piece of parchment paper sitting here, and I'm just going to flip them over. And then I just start... Hopefully you can see, I'm going to punch out the chocolate chips. Do you see them there? Oh, missed one. This will take me a few minutes to do as well. Now, I'm going to do the video one more time because I want to show you the two methods with... Um, See, look at them. They're pretty awesome. They're solid. They're really good. So I'm just going to punch them all out. And I'm going to do it with the double broiler because when I, when I did it direct heat, um, the chocolate went very thick and solid. And I want to show you the difference between the two because I should have been able to just pour the... Um, chocolate into this mold instead of having to spread it out but it's still they're still delicious just delicious and they do have a little wee bit of a grainy texture but it's all trial and error and I wanted you to see the the differences so we're going to do another one to show you what the difference is so I'll continue and get these all out there, I got them all out. I'm very pleased. And with the silicone mat, like, it's hardly even dirty. So I got a little bit of cleaning to do on that. And then I'm going to make a new batch and do it with a double broiler to show you the difference. Okay, I was very happy with the other um, chocolate chips that I made. I seized them, so I made it very thick and hard to work with. So we're going to try a different route and we're going to use a double broiler and I do not have one so I've got two pans and I'm just heating up the water a bit. So we're going to add in the um, cocoa butter and I've got 86 grams of cocoa butter and I'm going to put in it's 56.70 grams of 100% um, chocolate. And this is what I'm using again. So we'll put that in. Now, we'll get this all melted. It's starting to melt, and let's see what happens this time when I do it. Okay, that took a few minutes to melt the chocolate and the cocoa butter. So now, the next thing we're going to do is I have powdered erythritol and... I'm going to put it in my sifter and I'm going to sift it in. Hopefully I'm not in the camera too much. Turn this down a little bit. I'm definitely not a pro at this. Just like an average mama cooking at home, and I just wanted to share with you. So, if you see me making boo boos, try not to make the same ones. Okay, so stir that up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our two third cups of cocoa powder, and I'm going to actually put it in here again stir it up 
stir it in. It's looking good. You're getting the whole video this time. I'm not going to take any breaks. I love the first batch I made. They were delicious. This one's just not going to be as hard to put into my little silicone mat that I have. Looking good. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla just to give it that little extra flavor. Give it a good stir. Wow, what a difference. I think you're going to be happier with this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Pour it into my silicone mat. Now you can buy the um, chocolate chip. I have to be careful because I have a lot of cocoa on my spatula and I don't want to get it in the cocoa and it's not my chocolate and it's not all mixed. There we go. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to slide it around. Okay, I'll work on this and I'll be right with you. Okay, so I'm just taking this little gadget, my little knife, and I'm just trying to spread it around to fill all the little holes as much as I can. Oh, it's looking pretty good. So once I've got this completed, I'm going to just put it in the fridge. You can also put it in the freezer if you'd like. I'm trying to fill all the holes because I do have enough that I think I can do it. But what an ingenious thing to use instead of spending a fortune on their, their moles. I just thought that was great that I came up with this, this idea. All right. I think this will do the trick. So I'm going to put it in the fridge and uh, let it set for a couple hours. And I'll be back with you. Okay, here are my results. This batch here, which you get quite a bit in, um, I cooked it on direct heat. I seized it and it um, got very thick and I had to like paste and I had to put it on the silicone mat with a knife and spray. Delicious. Really, really good. Quite like that one. And then this is my other one. <clears throat> this is the one that I used a double broiler and did the recipe. Now it was so much easier because I just had to pour it on and spread it around real nice. It ran into all the holes and it was super. So um, now we're going to try it. Okay. This one, I'm not really sure if I was to leave it on in the double broiler a bit longer, but I got the granule sugar, but it's still delicious. 
So I'm getting a bit of granule from the sugar, but very, very good. So really the one that I did that turned into a paste, which is, I guess I call it seizing the chocolate, actually had better results because you don't have that sugar granule in the chocolate chips, but they're both excellent. Now I found this recipe on alldayidreamaboutfood.com. It, um, it's delicious. It will save you money as far as I'm concerned compared to trying to find the sugar-free chocolate chips. And they don't use um, usually erythritol or xylitol. They're always using uh, um, a different kind of sweetener that's not really that healthy for us. So I would like you to check it out on All Day I Dream About Food and then you can find the recipe also on my site lowcarbrecipeideas.com. So if you'd like to try this and try some of my other recipes, I think we'll make some chocolate chips next. You take care and I'll see you soon. Bye now.